Well, hello, welcome. <clears throat> welcome to our study of the Word of God today. It is a joy to be with you uh, today, and I trust you're doing well. And how are you doing, my friends? Are you doing well? Well, I trust that you will be encouraged as we uh, look at the Word of God today, as we study uh, God's Word together. This, today we want to be looking further at Ephesians chapter 6. If you have a Bible, I'd invite you to pick it up and turn with me to the New Testament in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, we want to look uh, together today uh, at verse 11. But before we do that, shall we look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for thy word. We pray that you would uh, use our time uh, today as we study thy word to encourage us and to challenge us uh, that we might live more like you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, last time we were together, uh, we looked at uh, our real enemy, and that is namely Satan. Uh, Paul clearly tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 that uh, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against um, principalities and powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We have a spiritual battle that's going on this very minute. Uh, we don't, we don't, are, are not always aware of it because we cannot see uh, Satan and his evil angels, but they do indeed exist, and uh, and we are uh, facing this battle uh, each and every day. And so the Apostle Paul, uh, one of his main commands in this uh, section of Scripture in Ephesians six is for us as believers to put on the whole armor of God, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Look at. What Paul says there in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. There's that command to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And so we looked a little bit uh, last time we were together at uh, our spiritual battle, and uh, we looked at uh, one of the main uh, things that uh, Satan tries to uh, attack us. And, and uh, what we want to do today is look a little bit deeper. Uh, at these wiles of the devil that the Apostle Paul speaks of here, that we might put on the whole armor of God in order to stand against the wiles uh, of the devil. You know, it's important, uh, as we're going to see, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, Lord willing, next time we're together, we're going to look at the different uh, pieces of armor that's available to the believer to put on in order to stand against the wiles of the devil. But, you know, it's very important for us to put on each piece of armor uh, because if we leave off one piece Satan knows that we're weak in that area and that's where he's going to attack but notice this this phrase here and Paul says that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil perhaps uh, we're not familiar uh, with this word wiles we don't really use it uh, but uh, uh, this word wiles uh, refers to Satan's uh, strategy, refers to his tactics, his plans, uh, his devices against the believer. And Satan uh, has many of them. Uh, and if one strategy doesn't work, Satan will try another. If one scheme doesn't work, he'll try another. And uh, we know that Satan does not give up very Easily, You know, the Apostle Paul uh, tells us in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, in verse 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, he says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices or his plans, his strategies. We don't want to be ignorant of how Satan attacks us, uh, because otherwise we will be overcome and, uh, and, and be defeated by his tactic, tactics. You know, I mentioned last time that when you're fighting a war, when our, when our soldiers today are overseas and they're, they're uh, fighting a war, uh, the soldiers want to, at all possible, uh, figure out their enemy's strategies so that they can plan and prepare and equip themselves to be able to counterattack uh, the strategies of their enemy. They want to know and be able to identify the enemy, and they want to know the enemy's strategies. Well, so, so should we. If we are in this spiritual battle, we want to be able 
to, number one, identify the enemy. We've done that. That is Satan and his legions of angels. And we want to know his strategy so that we are equipped and prepared to fight against the strategies of the devil or stand against the strategies of the devil. A strategy, uh, we're going to look at several of, of Satan's main uh, strategies today. Uh, and the first one we want to look at is the fact that perhaps one of Satan's main strategies uh, against us, against the world today, is his strategy of deception. The strategy of deception. You know, the Apostle John tells us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, he says, love not the world, that is the world system, the, the present moral uh, standard thinking um, of, of the world, of the present age. So love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust of it. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Notice those three things that the Apostle John mentions that we are not to love, those things in the world. Namely, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I believe Satan uses those three things to deceive people today into... Uh, embracing that which is not of God. And I believe this is his main strategy because this was his main strategy all the way back in the beginning with Eve. And let's take a moment to turn there all the way back to Genesis chapter 3 and look at, look at the strategy that Satan used to deceive Eve into taking of the fruit that God had commanded that they were not to partake of. Genesis chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, we, we read, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So his first uh, strategy here is to get Eve to doubt what God had said. Goes on to say, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Notice these three areas in which Satan was able to deceive Eve into taking of the fruit. Well, back up a little bit. The first thing that Satan does is, is seeks to uh, cause Eve to doubt what God had said. And the second thing Satan does is he, he, he uh, flat out tells a lie. Tells Eve, you will not surely die. God said you would die. Satan says you will not die. And he continued to tell Eve... Uh, that God was trying to keep something good from her, uh, and that if she would partake of the fruit, she would be like God, knowing good and evil. But notice now the deception, the strategy that Satan uses here in verse 6. The same strategy that we just read in 1 John 2, verses 15 to 17. Notice verse 6 with me. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. That is the lust of the flesh, the cravings, the desires of the flesh. She saw with her eyes uh, that the tree was good for food. That was the lust of the flesh. Satan caused Eve to crave after that which uh, he said was good. Satan made sin 
look so appetizing, so appeasing and exciting that Eve wanted to try it. Notice the second thing there. And, and it was pleasant to the eyes, pleasant to her eyes. Notice the eyes there. That is the lust of the eyes. The eyes saw and coveted and wanted and desired what she saw. So Satan deceived Eve here into, into the lust of her eyes, uh, looking at something uh, that looked so good to the eyes. And finally here, and the tree to be desired to make one wise. That is the pride of life. Satan deceived Eve into thinking that if she took this fruit, it would elevate her to be like God. Who wouldn't want to be elevated to be in this kind of position? So Eve was sold in this deceptive strategy of the devil. She took up the fruit and ate it and also convinced her husband, Adam, to eat it as well. So Satan used the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life to get Eve into falling into sin, and he was very successful. And you know, there are scores of illustrations in the Old Testament that we could turn to to see that Satan has used this deceptive method over and over and over again to cause uh, uh, both believers and unbelievers to fall into sin. You know, Satan tried this same strategy with, uh, with uh, uh, Jesus when Jesus was on earth. Turn, uh, I'm going to turn to Matthew chapter 4 because this is the account we have of the Lord Jesus Christ being tempted uh, uh, in the wilderness by uh, Satan himself. And notice he's going to use the same strategy he used on Eve to use on Jesus. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 says, Then Jesus uh, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Notice the, what Satan is trying to do. He's trying to get Jesus to fall through the lust of the flesh, the cravings of the flesh. But Jesus responds and says to Satan, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Verse 5, Then the devil taketh him up into, into the holy city, and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Here Satan is using the pride of life. And Jesus responds and says, It is written again, Thou shalt not put the Lord thy God to the test. And, G and Satan uses his final uh, deceptive strategy, that is the lust of the eyes in verse 8. And nine. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him. Notice that verb there, showeth him. The lust of the eyes, the eyes, all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. But Jesus responded and said, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only thou shalt worship. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So Satan tried the same deceptive method he used on Eve and tried it on the Lord Jesus Christ. But here he was not successful. Jesus Christ did not uh, uh, fall for Satan's strategy. And we know in these three areas in which Satan tried to get Jesus to fall, Jesus used scripture to stand against this particular strategy of the devil. And that ought to remind us uh, that when we are faced with temptations, that we stand against those temptations by the Word of God, by Scripture, because Scripture is our main weapon against the strategies of the devil. We're going to see that more next time we're together uh, as we look at the different pieces of armor that is available uh, to the one, to the believer, uh, who can put all those pieces of armor on to, to, to stand against the strategies of the devil. You know, one of the most uh, prominent sins 
uh, today that believers fall into uh, are, is, is sexual sin, whether it is premarital, sex, adultery, or pornography, and how Satan is so successful at causing believers to fall into these kinds of sin. He's successful because he's using the same method he used on Eve and he tried to use on Jesus. He uses the lust of the flesh, the cravings of our fleshly desire. He uses the lust of the eyes and he uses uh, the lust uh, of the, or the pride of life. You know, Satan is clever in using all kinds of images to get the believers or anybody to look at, to lust of the eyes, to, call the, to cause them to fall into sin. Satan uses the lust of the flesh to cause us to crave after that which God does not want us to participate or partake of. And Satan uses the pride of life, uh, wanting us to, uh, to uh, crave after uh, prestige or, or prominence uh, uh, and fall into sin in order to, to get more. And we need to stand against those strategies because this is perhaps the, one of the main strategies that Satan uses to cause us to fall today is this deceptive method of using the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And we as believers need to take precaution. Our flesh can get us into a lot of trouble. And Paul tells us that in Romans chapter 7 that in our flesh dwells no good thing. Our flesh loves to do what is wrong, and this is why it's so important for us to learn how to walk in the Spirit so that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We need to be careful about the sin of pride. We all have it, and it raises its ugly head too often, and this is one way in which Satan causes us to fall. So Satan uses this deceptive method, this method of deception to cause us to fall into sin by using the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Another main strategy that Satan uses, that he's used, used throughout history, and that is the uh, method of trying to imitate godliness, trying to imitate godliness. Paul, the apostle, talks about this in, his, uh, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 13, the Apostle Paul says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You see, Satan wants others to see him as an angel of light. And thus Satan has influenced thousands of men and women to believe false doctrine, and thus we have many false teachers today in the world spreading their deceptive lies around the world to deceive uh, individuals into believing that which is not true. Paul tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Because of this, we have thousands of religions today that may look godly on the outside, but indeed are destitute of the truth because they have embraced these doctrines of demons. Paul tells us in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, listen uh, to what the Apostle Paul says here, This know also that in the latter times some shall, uh, that in the la uh, latter times perilous times shall come, dangerous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, jumping down to verse 5, having a, notice this, form of godliness, but denying the power of it, from such we are to turn away. You see, Satan wants the unbeliever to stay in the dark. He doesn't want 
and on any unbeliever to come to the knowledge of the truth, lest they be saved. And the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that in whom the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of them who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You see, Satan is trying to blind the minds of unbelievers through false religion that looks godly on the outside. You know, Satan has been very successful in this, in this other method he's been using for years, uh, and he has influenced thousands of men and women to come up with their own religion to get to heaven that is opposite of the way God says uh, is the way to get to heaven. Satan has caused over 3,000 religions to be created so that when the unbeliever is searching for the truth, where do they look? There are 3,000 to choose from. Who has the right one? And of course we know what the right one is, and that is the way that is found in the Word of God. Jesus said himself in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. Jesus is the only way. There is no other way to get to heaven. And Jesus confronts the uh, religious Pharisees of his day in Matthew chapter 23, uh, unfortunately of which Satan had, had uh, deceived them, had, had blinded their uh, hearts to the truth of uh, the only way uh, to get to heaven. Matthew chapter 23, in verse 27, the Lord Jesus Christ, speaking to the religious Pharisees, says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. You see, the Pharisees uh, in the first century in Jesus' day were the most religious sect in Judaism. They were religious and they looked good. They looked godly from the outside, but Jesus said on the inside they were full of dead men's bones. There was no uh, eternal life uh, that was inside them. And these religious Pharisees were not believers. They were not genuinely saved. They were religious, yes, but they had a form of godliness, but they denied the power. The only way to salvation, the Bible clearly proclaims that it's through Jesus Christ and it's by grace through faith. And unfortunately, there are thousands of religions and denominations today that are not preaching the truth of how we are to get to heaven. They're not preaching the truth of what is found in the Word of God. And Satan has used uh, this method of, of, of deception, of imitating godliness uh, and, and leading many, leading many into false teaching and doctrine uh, through uh, his deceptive methods of creating uh, thousands of religions to deceive people into, into what is false. Another main strategy Satan uses is that Satan seeks to corrupt the mind of the believer through the simplicity of that is in Christ Jesus. Paul uh, points out this method of, of Satan in, in uh, the book of 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Paul says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through the craftiness, uh, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. You see, Satan wants to corrupt our minds from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. The gospel in Scripture is very simple, yet Satan wants us to complicate it. The doctrines of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the deity of Christ, the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, the rapture of the church, the thousand-year millennial kingdom, the seven-year tribulation period are simple doctrines that are not hard to understand, yet Satan wants to corrupt our minds by trying to make Scripture complicated. You see, the Bible, for the most part, is simple and straightforward. 
Yet many have complicated the Bible and its doctrines because it is always in man to think that there are deeper things that only the spiritual elite can know. The only legitimate method in interpreting Scripture is through the literal method of interpretation, which interprets Scripture in its grammatical, historical, and uh, literal method of interpreting. But Satan has used false teachers to corrupt minds to interpret scriptures differently, perhaps allegorically, by spiritualizing the text. And unfortunately, a man by the name of Augustine, who lived in the 4th century, really introduced this method to the church by telling his readers and his people not to interpret scripture as face value, but to look for hidden meaning there, to, to look for a, 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 uh, a, spiritual, um, a spiritual way of interpreting scripture instead of simply reading it as it is. You see, we are to read scripture exactly the way it is. Just as you read a, a book or a newspaper, or you listen to the news, or you talk to one another. You, you are using the grammatical, historical, literal method of interpreting one's uh, language, or interpreting one's language or speech. And the same is to be true when we come, when it comes to the Word of God. We're simply to let the Word of God say what it says. Because God means what He says, and He says what it means. I remember, I remember a, 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 a commentary once saying when it came to interpreting Scripture, uh, he says that we are to interpret scripture using the abbreviated word KISS, K-I-S-S. -S. In other words, the word K to keep, I, uh, it, S, simple, and S, stupid. In other words, keep it simple, stupid. And it's a good reminder for us. Keep the word of God simple. Read it as it is. We are not to complicate it. And so these are some main strategies that uh, Satan uses uh, uh, to seek to uh, seek to deceive us, he uses this the, the method of deception through the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Satan uses this method of of of, of uh, seeking to uh, uh, seeking to deceive individuals in, in, into believing what is false by imitating godliness. Uh, and so we have thousands of religions today that are not telling the truth. And Satan seeks to corrupt our minds from the simplicity of, of the Word of God, from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. We are to read Scripture as it is. And that's why it's so important, as Paul is going to explain further uh, in Ephesians 6, for us to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. He has many, many. I've simply given, th given, given three uh, today, perhaps three of his main methods that he uses, strategies that he uses, but he uses many, many. And we are, to, we are to put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand against those strategies of the devil. And my friend, if you're listening to this program and you are not saved, you're not born again, you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you, ha you are not equipped to stand against Satan's strategies. You need to be saved. So the first thing you need to do is recognize that you are a sinner and that Jesus Christ is the only Savior of the world. And my friends, by placing your faith and trust in the person and work of Jesus Christ, the Bible says you will have everlasting life. Why don't you trust Him today, my friends? Trust Him today as your Savior, and Jesus Christ will give you everlasting life. Thank you for joining us. May we see you next time as we look at putting on the whole armor of God.